<coughs> so I'm Rachel, and um, some of you may have heard this testimony last night, but I've been asked to share it again. And it's not that we want to put uh, some testimonies higher than others, because I believe that, that a heart transformation, um, someone that's living is just as, as relevant as a heart transformation of someone that passes away. But um, yeah, I, I had the privilege of leading a team to feed Jenna a tumor, and, and whilst we were there, we got really close with the host family. And specifically, one of the adopted sons called Asalipo. And uh, as Elisa mentioned, the boat got delayed and delayed and delayed whilst we were waiting to go to Rotuma. And so the team, uh, we were actually packed up and we were so excited the boat was finally leaving. And we packed all our gear into the car and we started driving uh, four hours across the, the island to Suba to get, to get onto the boat and, and head away. And we were halfway there and we get a phone call to say that the, the boat's been delayed again due to bad weather. And the driver was deciding, do we carry on to Suva and just spend a few nights there and wait for the boat to be ready, or do we go turn around, do you, and go all the way back to the house? And we just waited for a little bit, and then we really just had this sense, let's go back to the house. We really feel that we're supposed to go back. And so we all jumped back in the car, and we drove back, and, and there was this kind of heaviness in the vehicle, and, and disappointment sort of crept in because we were supposed to be going, we were excited to go, and now been delayed again and God, what the heck, what are you doing? And so we drove back to the house and and we sort of you know went back in and dropped our bags and, and one of the team members says, guys, let's just worship, let's just thank God because he knows what he's doing and if he's changed his plans it's gotta be for a reason. And so we went to, to actually the girls' room at the back of the house and we just started worshiping and we just started thanking God and we just started praising God. And at the beginning it was really kind of a, a, a flat pancake thing. Jesus, yeah, you're awesome, and then it slowly sort of built up, and we were actually heartfelt, just praising and worshiping God, regardless of the circumstances, and after, in about an hour in, we, with the host mother rushes into the house, and she says, can somebody come, can somebody help, Atalifo has fallen off a wall, and it didn't kind of register what has happened, but, but we felt the, the urgency in her voice, and so we, we got up, and we started running out of the house, and he was three doors down doing some gardening work, and we started running, and whilst we were running to the house, we noticed some road workers up the street, and they saw us running, so they came running, and then we could hear somebody screaming. And we, walked, we, we went into the, the property area, it was a Hindu family that owned the house, and the woman was absolutely hysterical, just going crazy. And so we knew something, something's happened, some, something terrible has happened. And, oh, I can just, this is the worst, I can see it all again. But, um... Four of, the, four of the guys went in behind the wall where Atalifa had fallen off and, and he'd hit his head and he'd hit his side on a, on a piece of concrete drain. And they, they picked him up and they carried him through the gate up the driveway and they could hardly carry him, it was just dead weight. These four men were carrying this little uh, Fijian guy and they dragged him up the driveway and they said, oh, maybe heat stroke, heat stroke. And I'm a nurse and I felt his body and it was cold. Like he had, he, he had sweat on him, but it was cold sweat and he was lifeless, completely just gone. And I tried to find a pulse anywhere I could and there was no pulse and so we did what, what we could. They started to take his clothes off and started fanning him. I'm like, guys, we gotta pray, we gotta pray for this guy. And so we just laid hands on him and we just started praying and praying and praying. And, we, and, and the only thing I knew what to do was to pray in tongues because I didn't even have the words in that moment. I'm just like, Jesus. And just started praying in tongues for this guy and he, he kind of started this, this gurgling, weird gurgling sound sort of came up from his throat and sort of foam came out of his mouth and it was really quite a horrendous scene and they, they pushed him in the back of the car and drove him up the road to the hospital. And oof. we went back to the house and some of the, the team stayed with the mother and prayed with her because she was quite upset and I just had this sense, we've got to go to the hospital, we've got to pray for him, like he, he's gone, but this, this can't be the end, this can't be it. And so we ran uh, the shortcut to the hospital. We went into the emergency room and he wasn't being seen by anyone or anything. I went to the back and his bed was just kind of pushed to a wall and he was just laying there and people were just kind of standing around and talking. And, and, and we went up to him and I just laid my hand on his chest and I just started praying and praying. He was doing this gurgling sound again from inside his chest. And, and I said, guys, we've got to pray because I, I opened his eyes like this and his, his pupils were fixed and they were black dilated. And when I put the light on them, they're supposed to constrict, and they didn't. So it meant that he had a major head injury. And I could see the side of his um, body was bruised and kind of distorted. So he had 
definite broken ribs, and then I figured, well, they've obviously punctured his lungs because they're not puncturing out, and this is a disaster. Even if he comes back to life, it's going to be horrendous. And so I, I, I told the team, pray, for, pray against head injury, pray against crushed lungs, just start praying against everything that's going against this guy. And we were praying and praying and praying, and the doctor said, okay, you've got to go out, you've got to get out of here, there's too many people in the emergency room. And Atalefa got wheeled in behind the curtain and they were trying to kind of do a few things with him. And then he woke up, just bang, he woke up. And he, and he looked around and he says, Why are you, what are you guys doing? Why are you worried about me? And the next thing that came out of his mouth was just, you'll never guess what I saw. And the doctor kind of looked at him like, all right, we were going to put him through the x-ray and, and, and do a few things with him. Meanwhile, our team is in the emergency room and we're praying for Atalifo and we're, we're quite upset and quite, you know, really just going for it. And people are coming in the backs of trucks. It turned, it turned really chaotic. People were just coming into the emergency room really sick and really, uh, like, in pain. And so we just started praying for them as they were coming in at the same time as praying for Atalifo. And we were literally watching them coming in. We were praying for them. They went out the back and then we were seeing them leaving the front door because they were healed. And, and it just opened up this whole uh, afternoon of just praying for it, for everyone in the hospital. We, were, we walked to the x-ray with Atalifa and we're praying for people as we're walking to the x-ray and they're just kind of, yeah, I've got no pain, yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm like, of course you are. And pray for the next one and pray for the next one. And, and I tell you, Atalifa got discharged five hours later from the hospital, walking out with a smile on his face, and he had two stitches and an arm wound that was that was gashed down to the bone, and absolutely nothing wrong with him. They said he had no head injury, he's got not one broken bone in his body, but he didn't need to put a drip in his arm or anything. And he came back to the house, and he said, he told us what he saw, and he says, I was sitting on the wall, and I heard a thump hit the ground, and he said, I thought someone maybe threw a coconut. And, and I looked down and I saw myself laying there. And he said, I was really confused. This was really strange that I'm sitting on the wall, but I can see myself. And then he said, I saw the sun run. And he, he, he saw me lying down here and went back up to the house. And he said, I saw your team in the back room and you were worshiping. And you were praising God. And I saw mom. She was in the lounge. And then I saw you come running out of the house. And I saw the road workers running from the street. There is no way that he could have known this. <laughs> None of us have told him this. And he says, and I saw these road workers running from the street. And then I saw you. Come and he says, Rachel, you, you were touching my head and you were praying for me, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't touch myself, and I couldn't touch you, and I could just watch this whole scene. And then he says he saw this wave of black come from one side like this, and then he said there was a wave of white come on this way like this, and they met in the middle, and then a voice like thunder went through him, and he got put in the car and went to the hospital, and he woke up. And, and I just want to share that with you because that rocked our team and rocked us a leaf. He's now in, a, in an outer island on a mission strip, seeing the sick healed and seeing people coming to salvation and coming to Christ. Every single person that we prayed for in the hospital in those five hours that we were also praying for Atalifa got discharged. The doctors and the nurses couldn't believe what had just happened. The whole family knew that it was a miracle. It, it completely wrecked the church that they were in and it completely just wrecked our team even more for Jesus because God is so powerful and he is so mighty and he is so full of love and the same love that we had for Adelifa that we pray for him with met the face of death and won because God is so much more powerful. Amen.